Hello, welcome to PhD study tips. Today is a very uh, good video for especially PhD aspirants, how to do PhD from scratch, which means you don't know anything, how to start and how to begin your PhD. And uh, you're totally confused where to start from exactly. That's what I get many, many uh, emails and uh, WhatsApp messages. Uh, how to how to start this PhD now remember do not get confused the first step is very easy decide the place where you have to do your PhD that's very very crucial you want to do PhD in India or you want to PhD in US or UK or Australia whatever the country may be you must first decide the place exactly and narrow down that place and be, uh, stick on to that place firmly and work on that uh, dedicated commit with commitment. You will get admission, surely. 90% if you work committedly with dedication, any university you can get admission depending upon your intellectual capacity. So you, you must also think about intellectual capacity. If you are an average intellectual uh, capacity and uh, if you try uh, Oxford it will not work out so you know how much percentage you have been gaining throughout your schooling college and uh, your masters in that way you will know what is your exact caliber and which are the universities well to apply PhD for so that is why choose place which place you want and then second comes in that place there may be some universities like for example if you choose Australia and if you choose Melbourne and there are so many universities in Melbourne and again here a crucial decision should be made before everything which university do you want to do PhD and stick on to that, to that again until you get negative response then you can change the university but otherwise also stick on to the university which you want exactly to join so first decide the place second decide which university and third, start your trials. Whenever I get messages, WhatsApp, or emails, many PhD aspirants, they don't do this. Two, they don't know which place to go. They don't know which university. No decisions are made even after masters. That, that worries me a lot. So I can't really guide anybody if they don't decide two things because these two things depends upon their personal uh, personal things because they know very well which climate is good for them, which place is suits for them mentally, psychological and body health wise. So in this way, they must you must first choose the right place, the right university for your intellectual capacity and for your body capability. That's why health wise also. Because some places are very hot, some places are too cold. You can't go to Canada if you are an asthmatic, right? I can't suggest you to go to Canada if you have asthma. Or I can't suggest uh, uh, to go to uh, like Arizona, USA, if you are reluctant, your body is not uh, uh, resisting heat. This is, this, this, this is how like you must first decide on your part, on your behalf clearly with good clarity. Again here, don't hesitate. Uh, this is a choice making time. So you be very careful. You take one wrong choice, you will end up four years of uh, hell, four years of hell of your PhD life. Because you take wrong decision, you have to pay for that four to five years anywhere. But if in India, you have to pay for three years for full time. So that is why I tell you, be careful with the place you choose, with the university you choose, that must be made a complete personalized decision. And thirdly, <clears throat> now, this is where I can guide you here. If you are ready with the place and university, the third thing is this, start contacting the university. Now, there are two ways of contacting the university. The first way is, that is the best way I prefer, whether it, the university is far from your house or if it is near, kindly visit university uh, limits. Go to the university directly uh, to know about PhD admission. That way, that way you are 
uh, really creating positive environment ar around you to get to, to get PhD admission. This is the first way. I will analyze this first way. Let me tell you the second way is this, contacting via email on internet. So open their website, go to the administration uh, um, page and get some emails and ask emails uh, of the concerned uh, uh, subject authorities like HODs we call. No? So you just take their emails with the help of uh, administrative people who are there on the internet given. You will get so many phone numbers and emails. If you email one or two people, they will re respond you with good information. So these are the two ways. I have already told you the first, if you are uh, if, if you are able to do now for example if it is a different country then you have to follow the second way but if you are in India choosing Indian University anywhere in India better you travel whether three days or four days go there or if it is very near to you nearby your place well and good better uh, suggestion is to visit your university and if it is abroad follow my su for second suggestion uh, write an email uh, um, to the university abroad. So these are the two ways. The first way is better because if you go there, there are uh, two things going to happen. First, you will know the admission process rightly. The second, you will also get chance to meet head of department HOD of your of the concerned subject that you are going to research upon. So that is very, very important. Know the fees of PhD, know, uh, meet some professors there and get some idea or meet some PhD full-time scholars staying over there and get some idea about PhD before doing anything. Before doing anything, you do first find it out there, uh, whether it is easy to get PhD admission or not, what is the criteria, what is the process, this is all these things you need to ask first. That is a primary analysis that you should make. If it is abroad, again, you contact on email and also do the same thing. What is the exact process for PhD admission? What are the levels till you enter into the university is what you need to find out very clearly. Don't go blindly uh, just by applying. If you don't know anything and you just apply without even uh, knowing the PhD admission process within that particular university, then how can you really guess things around and get PhD admission? PhD admission is all about not only intellectual capacity, but uh, making acquaintance, acquaintances with the professors who are there. That's very, very important in PhD admission. Unlike other masters and degree or diploma, you will you'll just need to pay fees and you get admission, but PhD is not such. PhD means you will need to have some acquaintances with professors and uh, college administrators or some PhD scholars who can recommend you for admission. That way, it, it becomes easier for you to get PhD admission. So follow these two uh, suggestions uh, in the beginning. That is the first uh, uh, thing that you need to do. And secondly, uh, once you know the admission process and everything, who is the HOD and who is in charge of everything, now the second step is preparing your PhD research proposal. Now here is what I have many videos how to uh, how to uh, select a research topic for your PhD. Uh, just uh, <clears throat> go down my videos and uh, see this. Choose the right topic. Um, and the latest topic, don't go for old, age-old topics, what your old PhD scholars are doing there. See the trend uh, for the last five years uh, in the newspaper trend, uh, what is happening in your subject. Choose from them. Are there anyone who won Nobel Prize, some scientists uh, who are the trending scientists right now and what? Uh, what are they uh, analyzing and what are they researching upon. So go to with the latest topic. That way your PhD admission becomes very much easier because you are not taking PhD topic that is um, well world enough and traditionally uh, so many people have done this and research on this topic and you take that world age old topic. Uh, people will get bored of uh, listening to these topics and they won't show interest. University administrators they don't, don't show interest for those people who choose um, well beaten around the bush topics. So that's why take uh, things seriously and uh, just uh, sit one week or watch my video how to do it and uh, come to final conclusion conf conclusion with a good topic. That way take the topic and again second time uh, if you are in India visit university again personally and meet head, meet head, head of department and show your uh, discuss about your research uh, topic. Now later on if uh, your supervisor accepts and prepare research proposal and all 
but uh, yeah but when you are applying abroad go on to the email uh, send a research proposal directly uh, by taking one of the templates i have on my website phdstudytips.com free phd template for research proposal everything is made ready for you so just uh, type uh, the necessary things in ms word that's it send them uh, abroad that's where the, this is this is the next step that you need to send a research proposal and here your supervisor uh, may accept your research proposal or give you some guidelines regarding this so whatever maybe you finished and come to final conclusion about the topic with your supervisor uh, whether it is abroad or in india your uh, supervisor which means supervisor means what i mean is the head of the department who is going to be your supervisor in the future so who is showing interest to be your supervisor in the future that is what what i mean so you need to decide your supervisor beforehand itself and uh, request them to be your supervisor to be uh, to uh, assist uh, in your topic decision making so this way uh, officially she will be appointed as your supervisor later when you really get phd admission but unofficially you ask her or him to be his future uh, your super future supervisor so okay everything is done research topic is done research proposal has been submitted yeah the topic has been uh, finalized of course it is also unofficial finalization uh, uh, after getting admission that is another thing again okay then the next step is uh, attending the phd entrance test conducted by the university if it is uh, in india or if it is abroad they will conduct some skype interview or online test maybe depending upon the university norms and regulations so find out how to attend phd entrance test what are the dates and all and uh, before everything you need to apply application process is there but this is a mini mere common sense yeah after getting your research proposal done if your supervisor is ready to agree to take you uh, as a phd candidate for her or him then you can go through application process fill the applications and uh, wait for the phd entrance test again here i have one beautiful video how to crack phd entrance exam find out the timetable there i have given and follow the timetable for some 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 time and attend compulsorily phd entrance test this is very very crucial for any phd admissions in any university there is no university in the world without uh, entrance uh, exam be it uh, in written form or online form or skype form whatever may be and the next process is uh, uh, like um, interview phd interview I have all the videos, so just I am uh, driving through shortly. Uh, PhD interview is where so five or six members of the panel sitting there, and they'll be interviewing you, your academic credentials, and uh, your past research experience, and your uh, interest, passion, and. Uh, the current uh, research topic and depending upon your marks in the PhD interview and depending upon, upon the recommendation uh, of the head of department which you had already met and uh, you are ready there and she would he would all anyhow recommend but here one confusion is there many many PhD students as parents ask me is this do we need to have research experience to get PhD admission my dear no need to have any research experience to get phd admission remember this your phd admission does not really ask you for that because it is a rumor it is a rumor phd itself you are entering to learn how to research when you are entering into phd uh, course where you are learning how to research and you have, uh, that is in pre course work how can somebody expect to know uh, to have research experience that's completely opposite for example you go for bike learning or car driving for car learning and uh, how can a car or uh, the one the one who teaches you accepts that you know already driving you must know already driving so this is this is completely opposite this is completely something different opposite uh, way of understanding it is a rumor you no need to have any research experience but if you have some research experience that may be a, a thing of telling that's all it will never impress anyone for the sake of getting phd admission so that's completely rumor so if you have passion that is very important if they recognize passion 
and uh, if you fulfill all the eligibility criteria academically and uh, with phd entrance test and phd interview you are cracking all this and you are fulfilling all the norms and conditions of the university research experience doesn't matter at all and uh, uh, you will get a phd admission if you, if you can easily crack phd interview and after phd interview what happens is pre course work now as soon as you get a phd admission like uh, anyhow results will be announced and uh, you, you'll get uh, if you are there with good marks you are ad, you, you get admission you are selected uh, to be a phd candidate over there in the particular university and now at the starting of the phd doesn't mean that you entered phd all the way before phd there is one thing called pre phd or coursework where you need to complete unless and until you complete that you are not allowed to officially fully uh, into phd admission so this pre pre course work uh, it contains different subjects like four to five subjects to clear or uh, the duration is up to uh, one month to one year or two years the duration so depending upon the university norms once you complete these months of uh, pre course work only then you are officially entering into phd uh, scholar you are a phd student so from there you can start researching and uh, writing some research papers attending conferences then uh, one or two years doing experiments and all so usually full time phd is a three year course and part time phd is four year or five year course and during these years what you will do you will establish yourselves with some research papers paper publications and experiments proved experiments analysis and uh, so attending some conferences national and international and at the end of uh, second year or third year you will have in the middle once in six months there are some dc meetings where you need to prove yourself say about the research once in six months again depends upon the university norms here so you need to finish uh, six uh, dc review meetings like once in six months that that makes you three years of life that's when you are ready to submit pre synopsis so pre synopsis means it's uh, uh, of your thesis how you are going to write thesis and all again i have one beautiful video how to write uh, synopsis uh, once uh, you submit that you have to submit synopsis and after synopsis you need to submit uh, uh, <clears throat> phd thesis that's what the flow is so once you submit your phd thesis it will undergo so many sc uh, scrutinizations like india and abroad or uh, with uh, two three professors and uh, later on uh, once your thesis gets accepted then you can get uh, a phd viva that is uh, after a thesis uh, acceptance from your professors you will have phd viva within some limited point of time there there is a last stage of phd is phd viva where you will defend orally and at the end you will if the professors and the dc panel everybody is satisfied and you are awarded phd degree and you are called doctor of philosophy and if you are like for example if i say your name is samuel you will become dr samuel phd that's when you will end up your phd and here the real thing starts once you finish phd this is the time for you to contribute the world with your research paper publications conferences you will do more in depth and uh, contribute to education life thank you so much this is a short run through walk through uh, how phd looks like but in detail explanations go and watch my videos or go and uh, read my website phdstudytips.com thank you so much goodbye